Ciao, jewelry makers. It's Joey Balistrieri. I am helping out on Wendy's channel, as many of you know by now. And yes, you see bags of seashells. And yes, I know that it is the beginning of fall, it's the uh, end of September. But you have to understand that here in Florida, we have been in the triple digits this summer and with the uh, feels like temperature, it's been record breaking heat and really you could not enjoy the beach or much of anything outside unless you were in a swimsuit in the water. So it is just now in the, about in the 90s and just now starting to be really nice <clears throat> to go for a walk and to be on the beach. And so that is what I did. I went to Cocoa Beach and then I came home and I went to Venice Beach, Florida. And I was searching for shells and fed the birds and we'll put a, a little bit of the footage of my trip. But when I am on the beach, I can't help but think that I am standing in the middle of God's jewelry supply store because I see so many beautiful artistic shapes and I start to look at the seashells and the bits of rock and coral, the natural holes in things. And, and I start to look and think of places that I can rest my wire or put a jump ring or do some kind of a creative pendant or dangle or charm. And of course, you can't especially right now after what we've been through the last month, month and a half, you can't look at a seashell, I can't, or make a piece of jewelry which without remembering Wendy because that was probably her favorite thing to do at, was to be at the beach. And her and I had a, a beach day plan that we didn't get to do. So I did have a little bit of a cry when I first started to walk on the beach, but I am also going to link for you a couple of videos. I will have Chris link for you a couple of the videos that Wendy did with her beach treasures and what she created from them. And then how much I was inspired to do my own thing, my own take on it. And so what I am showing you as I'm talking is all of the little shells that I have found and washed and separated and are ready to create with. So um, yeah, we'll link Wendy's videos. I do something a little bit different, but I hope this will give you some great ideas. And uh, what I do when I do my charms and my pendants is I make a lot of them while I'm working on it. And I'll, I was debating on how to show you this, because there's a lot of small elements and a lot of things that um, are going on at one time. A lot of different steps depending on the natural elements that you have found. So I hope this will spark some creativity and you know, we're in a place where it's kind of like summer and beach jewelry 12 months out of the year, but this is um, these are great to do even for the gifts for the winter when people are tired of people that live up north when they're tired of the snow and you know sort of thinking about sunny days walking on the beach so I'll show you at the end of the video a little project that I'm going to do uh, and also show you something that I already have finished with what we're going to make so let's set the this beautiful supply bowl out of the way and I'm going to show you what I have pulled out and set aside. So these are bits and pieces that I found on my beach walks and I just clean them and they are separated. Here are some little teeny tiny, this is a cut shell that I found in my supplies and since we're going to be making pendants, I just laid it here for inspiration. But here are some little teeny tiny shells and I'll show you what we're going to do with that. I also have a little dish of sand, and I'll show you what we're going to do with that. Also, while we're talking about sand, um, I went to the craft store and got this jar of pink sand, and also found a little bag on the clearance aisle from Summer Crafts of blue sand. 
So when we get to the sand part, I'll show you what's possible with that. And so let me show you my little bit of a work tray. Oh, one more thing I set aside. I also have these little tiny glass bottles with the little cork stoppers, and they already have the loop, so you can go from there with attaching it to things. I have a little piece of this chain, actually a couple of pieces of this chain that we had in the bargain bead box for this month, September. This was that beautiful textured stainless steel paper clip chain that I loved. Actually, every YouTuber that I saw loved it. And I have another little piece of chain, which is from a bargain bead box at some point. I don't know which one, but it was bag one. And just to show you, these little tiny scraps of chain should never be thrown away because we are going to do something fun and unique. See, it's just a small little segment of chain, but it is useful. So let me set that out of the way. And then this is my project tray that I was working on. Clear a little space. So these are the pendants that I make from the bits of shell. I think they they are either clam shells. Some of them you don't exactly know what they are, but these are some of the pendants that I was able to create. And as you can see, really you just let the shape of what you have found on the beach sort of dictate which direction you want it to go in and the, the spaces in the shell where your wire can rest and then you embellish from there. So those are a few that I have already done. And this one is a piece of a snail shell or some kind of a cre uh, sea creature, sorry, tangled up my words, that I have used E6000 glue and a bead cap and because it had no hole in it, the trick is to put your head pin through the bead cap first and then glue it on top of the shell. And the nice thing about these is that there are no sharp edges. The ocean has already done the smoothing and done all of the work for you. So it makes a beautiful pendant or charm and it's there's no sharp edges. So that was a really great find. So I left this undone because from here, you can do so many things. You could put a bead here, you could put a pearl, a crystal rondelle spacer, you can wire wrap a loop here or do a simple loop and then you have your component already made. So there's that one. Here is another one that I use the double bead cap and the same exact premise. It had this, this beautiful little swirl of a shell had no natural hole so I simply inserted my my head pin into one side of this double bead cap and used E6000 glue found the perfect sweet spot where it sits on top of the shell and now from here I'm ready to add a bead let me see I have one right here I can just use for a sample I can add a bead right to the top and then do a wire wrap or keep going if I want to make it a little bit longer of a dangle or component. So I left that one like that. This is another just a beautiful piece of shell. The ocean had already tumbled it. It had beautiful architecture in it and it didn't really have a hole but it had this sort of crack and I fit my wire in there and did a nice long stem on my loop and fit my bead cap and, and then also added a little E6000 glue. So as a pendant, that's not going to go anywhere. And um, I do something else, which this piece reminds me of, that um, I have this little funnel too for the sand, which we'll talk about. But I do something else with these. Now this is a piece, I don't know if I will do it on these. I assess literally piece by piece, you know, make the decision of how I'm going to finish it. But 
sometimes when you've selected your shell from the ocean or from the beach, they look so beautiful in the ocean, the water has wet it and it's beautiful. And then when they dry out, the sheen is gone and that water look is is no longer there. And then the luster and that, that beauty is not there. So this was a piece that was like that. It was very dry looking once I washed it and dried it. So I took some very inexpensive, I think from the dollar store, just clear nail lacquer, it is lacquer, and gave this shell a nice coat just to sort of bring back that wet water look. So on this piece here, I haven't decided if I want to give it that coat of lacquer or not, but you know, you can also save it until you're ready to design the rest of the piece and decide if you want to add sheen or leave it in this more matte look, you know, after you've collected it. So let's see. What else did I have to show you? Oh, this piece. I love this little piece. This was a little broken center of a shell. And again, it really didn't have a hole. So I put my wire through a bead cap and then used the E6000 glue to glue it onto the stem of the shell and then did a little stack of turquoise howlite he she square he she beads, which are so unique and just some little some little seed beads in between and you have a beautiful little charm or little dangle or even on a very petite necklace that could even be your pendant so i think on this one i was not feeling like i needed to lacquer the shell it was pretty to me as it is but i decide literally piece by piece when i start making these uh what else is in my tray i have left some things that I wanted to do to show you what I do. Now, this is an example of one that to me really, it's a beautiful shell, but once it came out of the water and dried, it just looks very dull and it needs a little bit of sheen. So, and this had one of those small double bead caps on it. So I am probably going to wire wrap like a turquoise glass bead or a small mermaid glass bead. Really, you can embellish from there once you have this part made. So let me show you how easy it is with this little bit of nail lacquer to put a coating on this shell. You literally just take this little brush that comes in the nail lacquer and go around and just give it that little look of sheen, just the way it looked when it was in the water on the beach. I just go around and make sure that I don't have any that's super thick or about to drip. Make sure it's a nice even coat, really just the way we do with our fingernails. It's just amazing how good it looks and it just revives it. So I actually have a little hook behind me that I will pinch that on or even you can really set it on anything to dry, even a little piece of an old plastic bag or something. So I'm gonna set this one aside to dry and maybe when we're finished making the others, it will be dry enough for us to have a look and see how it, how it turned out. And here's another one that is finished. Now, this one, if you can see, so these types of shells very often have a natural hole that the ocean did for you, and that's great, but this one did not. So I chose a bead cap that fit the top of it really well, and already put my, I put my wire through it, my head pin or, or even a, an eye pin, depending on the bead cap you choose and let the E6000 glue dry completely before you make your loop. But from there, you have a shell dangle or charm that you can do anything with from there. Necklaces, bracelets, and of course, I'll show you the project we're going to do with it. So that's another piece that's finished. This is another uh, one that is so unique to me. This is a little piece of some sort of a shell. I really have no idea what it is. 
and this is one that I honestly like the texture. I didn't feel like I needed to add any gloss to it. So I have a flower bead cap and it holds a bead inside the flower. And I used a ball head pin and went through and created the, the um, wire so that when it's all dry, you have a place to create your loops. And then again, place it as perfectly as I can, centered, and let the E6000 do its job, let it dry. And now this one is ready to wire wrap. So I actually have one of those that was really similar, so I can show you exactly what I did. So let's see what else I have here. Oh, this was such a unique piece. This was such a unique piece. I already played around with it. This is another one of those beautiful snail-like shells, but look, it has a natural hole already in the top, and you can easily, I don't know if you can see, but you can easily access that hole. Now, the hole is quite large, so a head pin went right through it. So I had to find a little bead that I can put through that hole, and it holds it keeps it from coming through. And then I found a beautiful larger bead cap that just rests perfectly on the top of that. So let's do this one together. I'll show you how easy it is. So literally, you just saw me sort of assess the natural hole and what I need to do to make that wire stay. And I'm going to grab some E6000 glue I really like these small tubes of E6000. You do wanna have a toothpick handy, that's a great thing, because this glue gives you a little time before it dries and you can clean off any excess. But I find it so easy with these small tubes to just get my glue coming out and just go around the opening And also this, now this shell is very thick, but doing this process can reinforce the natural holes on the shells so that they don't break when you're working with them to make jewelry. Oh, I was looking for the bead cap. So I'm going to just get the bead cap right on the shell in place. And on this one, since the bead cap is open, E6000 does dry clear, but I still don't want to make a mess. So I just clean it up a little bit, taking off any excess that came out. And just get that, get it in place until you're happy with it. Like I said, with E6000, you have some time before it starts to set so you can make the adjustment. I just think that's so beautiful. So I'm going to just set that one over here to dry while we continue. So another little trick I wanted to show you, when you're doing uh, the procedure of putting your pin through the bead cap and then gluing it to the shell. You do whatever you need to do, find a place to prop it up, or I even keep a little bit of low tack, just scotch tape on hand, and that just held this one in place. Because see, this one had no hole. There was no place, no natural place to put a wire or a jump ring. So I created it with the E6000 glue. So I just thought that was a really beautiful one. And again, you could put the lacquer on this to make it look as if it's still in the water, but this one I think is quite pretty just the way it is. So that one I will probably leave on its own. Let's see, um, another, another little thing that can be useful here is this one, I really love the architecture of this shell, and it is quite smooth. The ocean has already smoothed everything out. Um, so I found a bead cap, and that's the thing, you're going to just have to play around with your supplies, pull out. 
the things that you have and find things. It's like putting a puzzle together, find things that fit. So on this one, I decided to go ahead and do most of my wire wrapping because of needing the cap to sit nice and flat on the top of the shell. And so one thing you can do is take a little file, take one of these little files, if it's just not cooperating, and I've already done this a little bit on this one, and of course, I'm not gonna do much because it's making a mess, but over a trash can or over a paper towel, but you can just use a little file to gently smooth out the top of your shell so that, here it is, I told you there were a lot of elements to this project, so I was debating for the last two days how exactly to show it. So I just have this little bit of wire stem so that I can get the best fit before I put the glue on till I'm really happy with it. And I honestly think the two petals of the speed cap just like that. So let's get our E6000 because I love these small tubes. I always had the giant tubes of E6000, but I ended up losing most of the glue in the tube because the projects that you do in jewelry, you generally don't need very much. And so I would end up losing a lot of the glue and it would harden and I would end up throwing it away anyway. And so when the company started making these smaller tubes, they just work great for jewelry people. It's still a little messy, but it's more of a controlled mess. <laughs> okay, Let's see how that, oh yeah, that fits really nicely on there. See how it just goes over the back of the shell? Do have a little cleanup on this one. Before you get started with this, it's a good idea to have a little plastic bag or one or two paper towels and a couple of toothpicks handy so you can keep your fingers clean and keep your, your mat, your jewelry mat clean. So it's really that simple, is just really designing with your supplies and fitting the shapes of your bead caps together with the shapes of the shell. So this needs to dry completely because if you don't wait at least 24 hours when you start to maneuver the wire and cut it, you'll pull the, pull the metal findings right off of the natural shell. And then I wanted to say another thing, just a tip that I have discovered in doing these. Most of the shells are very fragile. <coughs> Oh, excuse me. Most of the seashells are, are pretty fragile, so you really want to be cognizant of the gauge of your wire because really thick wire is going to put too much stress. And it's really sad when you found a beautiful shell that you love the architecture of it and then you break it, trying to get the wire around it or trying to get the jump ring through it. So the mostly the thinner wire unless it's a piece like this that's obviously not so fragile uh, so that was just something that i discovered in the process so like on this one um the fr the shell is really thin and beautiful and so i didn't try to do my bead cap all in one step i just took a head pin and placed it so that this was coming straight out of the shell and a little dab of the E6000 glue in there for the head pin. And once now that's been dry for a couple of days. So now I can put my bead cap on. Now I would like to glue this before I continue with beads and wire wrapping, just because I, I like the stability of that for, since I make a lot of these at one time and I don't exactly know what my projects will will always be, I make them so they are at the ready and keep them in my supplies. So when I start to design, I have a good selection of my own handmade components, uh, charms, dangles, pendants, and you don't have a lot to choose from, but it is that simple to use a little bit of glue and you, you do have to be patient because you have to wait for things to dry before you can start wire wrapping, which is why I do the project like this ahead of time so that 
when I'm actually ready to start working, I don't have to wait. These are already ready for me. I'm going to set this one over here to dry. And the other thing I was going to show you is some of these have a perfect natural coal already in it. And you need to do a little more if you just want a charm than just put your jump ring inside the hole and it is ready to hang on a necklace or to do anything with. Now, if this hole is too close to the edge or you feel that the shell is too fragile, you can reinforce that by putting a little bead cap right over the hole. And that again is just a matter of finding a bead cap in your supplies that actually fits the hole. So you can tell I've already played around with these for a little bit before I started filming. So I found a bead cap that fits really nicely over the hole and it looks like a starfish in a way. So this one, the hole was really large. So any kind of a head pin is going to go right through there. So for two reasons, I would do that to this one so that the hole is reinforced because it is a little bit close to the edge and also to make the hole more workable for a head pin or, or, or something that you wanted to use it for. So this is a really um, pretty one that had the hole already and it was at the top of the shell. So I'm able to put a, an eye pin through that and it stays perfectly. So if I wanted to hang it this way, stack some beads on here, I can. But if I wanted to hang a charm or something from the inside, I can do that. So I have a little selection here. I just went in my stash and pulled out some small sort of ocean themed charms that could hang. Also have some more of those little square turquoise heishi beads. Um, let's see, let's try one inside. Oh, how about a little pink whale? Let's see what that looks like. So what I would do on this is open, let's see if it, how it works. I think it will without another, you will have to assess if you need like a four millimeter jump ring or if you can put your small charm just, I. I actually think it's going to work really well just on opening the eye pin and closing it. It's a little hard to get a hold of with nothing on the pin, but we can do it. I'll tighten that loop up because I don't want to lose my little whale. Okay, and then here's the one with the bead cap. So then I can put that right through the hole on the on this side and my little whale hangs inside now that that's also where you have to look if he isn't hanging down where you need him to be you may need to add a couple of beads onto the onto the eye pin before you do your wrapping so I have just a selection of tiny little seed beads and just some you know, leftover beads that I keep in a tiny little jar. And let me just put them on here. And let's see, just add one and see how it falls. Oh, I misplaced, oh, there it is. I have so many shells on my tray. So see, he hangs more with just one little bead because he turned around, but he hangs more at the proper height just perfectly inside the shell. So we can go ahead and I would do a wire wrapped loop for something like this so that you can tighten it down to keep the little whale dangling facing forward. When I hold it up, I know you can't see, but I had to have a look at it. So what I think I'll do is hold my thumb right over the whale just where I want him to stay and get a hold of that piece of wire and get it at a 90 degree angle and then come in with my with my round nose pliers and the way I do this is that 90 degree angle 
and then I'll put my round nose pliers there and then over the top of the plier and then rotate the plier. Oh, it looks like this head pin. Oh, it just lost a little bit of its finish. We can still use it. We'll keep going over the top of the head pin. And then I always, I'm a visual learner. So I was told years ago when I was learning to do this, to sort of look at this as this was the lady and that's her little scarf. Boy, this head pin, the finish just is coming right off of it. Um, so anyway, that's the lady's head and this is her scarf. And her scarf goes around her neck. So that little visual picture helps me, let me get my other pliers because these head pins, that was what I was, a tip I was mentioning earlier is that with the shells and the fact that you've glued things over natural holes, you might want to look for a finer gauge wire or head pin. And in some cases here, I actually made my own. Oh yeah, so our little our little whale hangs perfectly inside. Let me get some cutters. Let me just cut away that extra and then it does need to have it does need to have a little tuck. Oh, so cute. The whale hangs inside that shell just perfectly. And one other thing about the bead caps on the seashells. So, you know, if you have been making jewelry for any time at all, you know that we are constantly fighting the tarnish. And silver base metal in particular tarnishes so quickly. So I have the this set of pins that are acrylic and I decided to try them to add color. It almost looks like cloisonne or almost like an enamel bead cap, but it is just an acrylic pin. And I have gone ahead and chosen a couple of bead caps that had a design that I could easily follow with the pin. I don't know if you're seeing that clearly, but this one had little sort of dots, almost like a sea urchin. So I did a base color in turquoise and then use the small, the pens have a fat end and a skinny tip end. And then I use the, the smaller one to just do all the dots in the coral. And I thought it sort of looked like a sea urchin. And then this one had this pretty scroll all the way around. So with the fine tip of the pens, I was able to get two colors on there. And that way this silver base metal bead cap has a, an acrylic coating and hopefully it's going to have a longer life as a piece of jewelry. I had to pause my work because my camera battery was dying. So while I was recharging it, I finished the pieces that I had already shown you, finished the wire wrapping, added beads to a few of them. And quite a few of these, I'm going to leave them just as they are because as I said, I make these in advance of future projects and I don't exactly know what color beads or what design I will be doing so that leaves me the option on some of them to coordinate it with a chain or whatever else my design is. So let's continue to talk about these markers that I found. Uh, they are water-based, non-toxic. You do have to store them horizontally. This happened to be a set of 24, but they were available in 48 and I think 62. I can't quite remember, but since I've never had these, I started with the smaller set and included in this was even a metallic gold and metallic silver color. Well, they have two 
different sizes of tips. The one side is a fat tip end, and this side is for finer work, a narrow skinny tip end. So what you do is, depending on the pressure that you apply, you can get more pigment. So a light dot or tap would just be a little bit of a dot, and the more you do, the more you get color and pigment. So I had already shown you the two that I did off of the seashells. So I have adhered a couple of these same ones to seashells so it will be a little bit easier to have something to hold on to. Um, so interesting about these is it says works on various surfaces like paper, canvas, glass, ceramic, plastic, wood, steel, etc. So I tried it on these base metal jewelry findings and so far I've been really impressed. So I'm going to start with this bead cap that had the swirl and just choose two colors. So maybe this pretty turquoise with this kind of shell pink. Um, I think what I will do is start with the base color going to use this smaller tip and I want to do the base color here. I'm going to do it the reverse of the sample that I did. And on my sample I did do one coat and let it dry and then went back to make it a little bit more opaque in color. Uh, they dry really fast as well on this on this particular project because it's such a small amount of paint and such a small surface it it dried really 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 fast so it was fun it was instant gratification so while I'm doing this I just want to tell you I have a love-hate relationship with technology so I'm working I was on a roll and looked and my my battery was red and about to turn off so I had to stop everything and recharge the battery so you know love technology when it's cooperating and functioning and doing it what you need it to do and then not so much when it's not cooperating but um, for the second half of this video I have connected a small microphone. I am experimenting and researching on what will give the best quality to the videos as far as sound, light. So um, yeah, in the comments, if you guys want to let me know what you're seeing and hearing, that would be really helpful of, you know, trying to give the best quality because none of this is any use if you can't see what we're trying to do together. And, you know, maybe you're making along with me. So I do that sometimes. I'll put someone's video that I love on my iPad and watch and listen as I'm doing it. So, you know, maybe some of you are doing that too. So that is pretty well, pretty well pigmented. And now I'm going to go back in with this pretty pink color and do the scroll work. This is really fun, and I am a person that does not like to paint. I don't like to paint walls. I don't like to paint anything. I can do it, but I don't really love it, and I make a mess. I, I end up with paint all over me and areas around me. So for this is great because this is not messy, and I feel like I have good control it's almost like coloring in a coloring book. Just sort of find the lines and follow along. I think on this pink color we will need to do, I think we will need to do a second coat. It's lighter than the turquoise color. But I think this is really pretty. And you know, you'll see as you watch that I really focus on keeping projects as simple as possible. So all of these shell charms and pendants and dangles, I did not drill. No drilling. 
and you know not a lot of sanding and like really keeping it everything simple the lacquer is a simple bottle of nail lacquer so I don't have to go outside with my pieces with a can of gloss and newspaper and out in the heat in the garage and and spray it uh, so you know I try to find ways to keep projects simple and to be right at my work table and really move the project forward and have something beautiful without a lot of unnecessary mess and extra steps. So I hope you guys will find that too. I do have a little hand drill which I bought after watching Wendy's videos and I have drilled a couple of things but I prefer not to if I don't have to. So when I'm on the beach that's one of the things I look for is things with a beautiful natural hole and things with an unusual shape and things that I can work with just as is. It would probably be better if I let this dry and and then did the second coat because I think I'm actually wiping off some of my first coat because I'm being impatient but I wanted to show you how fun and fast and easy these these pens are. So and I think yeah it's it's pretty much dry probably probably not perfect but pretty much dry and so that one's done and so I did these I was really just testing I did these holding it on my finger which was a little more difficult so maybe if you're going to try this go ahead and glue it to the shell and then you have an easy handle basically for a painting my shell pink to be and again after it dries you can go back and add more pigment if you see spots that you've missed but I even think a little bit of the silver shining through is really pretty. So that one is done. So this one let's do um, let's do the fat tip. Whoops wrong side. Let's do the fat tip on this one. This is that bead cap that looks a little bit like a sea urchin and this was one of the things that I got on my Gainesville shopping spree were these cool bead caps which I think are meant for cube beads because it only has it doesn't have four sides to the cap it only has two sides and then two sides are open and when I saw those this was immediately what I thought of is fittings for the top of seashells so anyway I'm going to use this this large end of the pin and really just kind of color it I did on my other ones I was able to go on top of another color so like if I decide I don't want this part to be in the shell pink I can go back with the other with the other color on top and the pigment covers the first one so the box says you know you can apply pressure with the pen to get more of the acrylic paint out onto your piece so that is what I'm doing because of the texture the bumps on this it is a little bit difficult with a pen to get the paint down to the bottom of the design but again I don't mind a little bit of the silver peeking through the paint I think it's lovely and it adds dimension and then you know you can go around the edges with the I'll go ahead I have space to work with the fat tip but you could switch to the skinnier tip if you want to cover your edges I'm going to leave a little of that silver shining through so yeah it's pretty good coverage with this end of the pin and now well, that one I have a little bit more paint on so it didn't dry as quickly as the other one but for me since I'm such a messy painter these pens are a dream because I can paint and not have paint everywhere okay I'm going to use this same color and I think we'll try the skinny tip and maybe go around yeah see I'm able to put one color on top of the other and it really does well you really get good coverage and I just loved the little look of sea urchin with this bead cap I just in my mind it was perfect to go on top of a shell sea creature look this is so much fun 
Now, I also was thinking that it might be a good idea to put a little thin layer of lacquer on top of the paint once it dries, and I may do that. Again, you've seen how easy that is, just a little brush, and you just sit at your work table and do it and just have a little space to set things off to dry. And there's our little look of a sea urchin on this one. Really fun and really easy. I'm going to set him off my bead mat so I don't get paint on my bead mat. So I do want to say again, these pens need to be stored horizontally if you get them, because I imagine that they don't want all of the pigment, all of the acrylic paint inside to go down to the bottom. So I'm going to take mine out of this jug and put them in a, in a horizontal box when I'm finished. So let's finish up the last couple of things that we had talked about. I'm, I have the elements for another one of these, so I'm going to show you exactly what I did on that one. I have a shell that's really similar, could almost make earrings out of that. And this is just a little flower bead cap. And I found, I think this is a six millimeter bead. I didn't measure, but it just fits in there nicely. And I have a very fine gauge ball head pin. And again, on a piece like this, where the shell is pretty fragile, and you're going to be adhering this to the top, a wire that's fine gauge that won't put undue stress on your component that you're creating, you know, is a really smart idea. So just put that bead cap, that, uh, I'm sorry, put the head pin inside the, the bead, inside the bead cap, and I'm going to bend it straight up. And this particular bead cap had these little uh, openings, little filigree around the edge, and I'm going to take advantage of that to make this a little bit more, this wire a little bit more secure again, because it's basically floating on the on the top of the shell. Let me get some pliers to help me. So I'm just going to thread it through that little bit of filigree and just pull it up, and that already that already made this tight. Let me grab some nylon jaw pliers and just straighten my wire so when I am ready to wrap it, it's all straight and ready for me. Okay, so already that is a very secure component and now all that is necessary is to find the sweet spot on the front of the shell. And now on this one, Maybe I will go down a little further. Let's bring in this tube of E6000 glue. I have almost used this whole tiny tube, but it is so much better than the large tubes that I have worked with for years. So I'm going to put a good amount on the shell. The glue does continue to slowly come out of the tube, so I always take a minute to put the cap back on. And then I'm just going to rest this piece that I made. I think this one will stay and set up nicely without taping it, but as I showed you, you can take a piece of scotch tape, you can use whatever is at your disposal to keep that in place until it's dry enough to work with. And again, just a reminder, it's really good to let it set up at least overnight before you add beads or wire wrap, but this is the one that I finished while the battery was recharging, and I like the presence of a little bit longer wraps. I usually do two or three. I think I did five on this one. I just like the presence of it at the top, and it's such, such a beautiful, natural, organic, a, sort of a boho component that's all done by hand. I just love it. Okay, I'm going to set this one aside very carefully because it needs, in fact, I'm going to take it off my mat so that it can dry. Okay, this was another uh, beautiful shell that was broken, but it's very smooth, and I just love the shape of it. And it sort of reminded me, you know, broken crayons still color. 
So that's true of people too, even when we're dealing with health issues or, you know, something is not perfect in our bodies, we can still accomplish things, create, contribute. And so this shell was sort of the embodiment of that for me. And so I started to play around with bead caps that would fit it. And this one fits the top of it perfectly and just makes the shell have a beautiful upscale finished look. And I love even the copper color with the natural colors in the shell. So again, just going to bring in that E6000 glue and give it a good coating around the top. And because the... Um, because the wire, the, the uh, eye pin is already inside, I don't have to so much worry about the eye pin going through. And I just I had thought maybe I didn't mention, but on some of these other pieces where you are putting the E6000 around the hole of the shell, you do want to make sure that your hole is clear for later putting a pin through or wire or beading material it's very easy to, to uh, glue your hole closed and then it's beautiful but not workable. So on this one, that wasn't really an issue because I'm going to put my eye pin through there already. And just make sure a piece of tape might have been a good idea on this one. I want it to be straight. Very pretty and so simple. When that dries, that will just be lovely. I definitely think I will stack some beads before I create my loop at the top. I'm going to set that one off my bead mat as well. And then this was one I wanted to show you. This is a mother of pearl shell that is just beautiful. It has a beautiful sheen to it, even though it's out of the water, so I will not lacquer this one. And it had a nice little flat edge. So I wanted to show you what I did for this one. These very thin bead caps can literally be bent or manipulated to fit things. And that is exactly what I did on this one. So I'm just going to get a hold of it the best that I can. And about in the middle, just start to bend it with my fingers. Let's see if you can see that. It's very soft metal. And you can come in later with your pliers and get the, get the adjustment, but it's very simple to sort of fold that in half like a tiny taco. And that is exactly what I did on this one. Now I used um, 22 gauge wire and I found some chip beads that were some sort of shell and a little tiny crystal rondel spacer and folded my bead cap and let me move this so you can see and I needed because how thin and delicate this shell is I could not use a regular eye pin or head pin I needed to create my own so I just did a little messy loop and and made it very as flat as I could with my pliers just you know just as flat as I could make it and then fitted the whole fitted everything down and now that's going to go right there and once again you have to assess each piece and sort of find that sweet spot where you like the look and for me that is perfection so I am going to bring my glue back in and I've already checked to see really where that bead cap is sitting and on this one this shell is so fragile and thin and lovely. I'm going to do a little glue on both edges, front and back. So that will add stability. And even so, when this becomes whatever it will become, it will it will still be a very it will be a very fragile piece, a charm or dangle. That is just about perfect. I left the the beads on the wire there because it gave me a little something to hold on to because again, this shell is very thin and very small, so it just gave me a little leverage there. And the toothpick is a very inexpensive, wonderful tool. So I have that one. 
in place. I think I want to move it a tiny bit. Yes. So that one is completed and I'm also going to set that one off my mat to dry so we can continue. So the last thing that I wanted to do with you is do a little wire wrapping on this fragment of shell. I have already shown you these, but we'll have another look at how they turn out. And you'll see that some of them, my wires were going vertically around the pendant and some of them horizontally. The fragment that I have found sort of tells me what how it wants to be configured. So on this one, I actually chose this one because it has an odd number of grooves. So I can do one, two, three, if you can see that. I can do my wire in the three center grooves of the shell and leave the, la the outer two um, empty and that gives me a nice center point to go up to my bale. So I'm going to do this one in silver and I have already shown you I like to keep my my spools of wire in bags so that any scraps that I have can go in the bag and I'm not wasting wire. And then I just cut the top off the package so that I know what's in this bag. So this is 22 gauge round medium temper German style wire and it is silver plated. And I'm going to take a pretty good length of this like my beading mat is about 14 inches wide. So I'm going to do about 14 inches maybe a little more. Again, I'm not wasting because if I don't use all of this, any scraps that I have will go right back in this bag and will later become head pins or jump rings or spirals or something. So I'm just going to smooth this wire out with my hands. And you really need these to be secure when you do this. So I hold the wire on the back the, the, the part that I have determined is going to be the back. I hold the wire on the back and then go up to meet it. So this fragment is already encased in wire even though it's not secured. So that's my center loop and I'm going to go to the, I'm, I'm sorry, that's my center ridge on the shell I meant to say and that's where I decided to start on this one. And then I'm going to go on the outer ridge to the right and come back down and come back up on the opposite side. And that gives me, trying to hold it and show you, that gives me the silver wire centered on that fragment pretty nicely. So now we're going to treat this almost like a briolette where we get this wire that's going straight out as centered as we can on the shell. And I think I'm going to go behind. I'm looking for the natural path of the wire. So if I go behind, if I bend this wire down, you can see that I have everything centered fairly well. And now if I wanted to, I could go again if I want to make the presence of the wire more predominant on the piece, I can. But I think on this one, since it's so, such a small fragment, I think maybe I'll do a spiral. So now, I'm just going to get it secured by coming around almost the same way you would do your wraps. And I was able to do this one completely with my fingers. Uh, you know, you can use pull your pliers in if you want to, and uh, it's really secure. Sometimes if the wire is not resting really well, I will go in with my pliers and grab the wire like this and just do a bend and that tightens everything up. And on this piece, in order to make it nice and tight, I did that front and back. And I actually love the look because it always looks like lightning bolts to me. But I don't even think I need to do that on this one. And I want to have a nice bale, a nice chunky bale. So I am just going to continue around. Now on this, a messy wrap, would look really pretty, but I have to say I struggle to do messy wraps. I am fussy and I'm a perfectionist and I tend to make everything really neat, but you could easily do a messy wrap or wrap back down again on top of those wraps to thicken the look of your bale, which I might do and see how it looks. The nice thing about that is if you don't like it, you could always unwind it 
and cut that away. But look at that. I'm happy with the way that one turned out. Really happy. So I just wrapped up and then let me get my pliers so my finger's not in the way. I wrapped up with the wire and then wrapped back down. And so now that is nice and thick. And I'm going to leave this wire so we can create one of the spirals like we've done on this. So I won't cut that away. Now we simply do our normal wire wrapped loop. I'm going to put my pliers in there, give that a 90 degree bend, and then bring in my round nose pliers, do a nice bale, and I go wrap that wire around the top of the pliers and rotate the pliers. And now I'm making the lady's little head that I told you about. So if you look at it and take the plier out, that's the lady's little head. I'm going to put these back in just to center it. Again, I'm a little bit fussy about it. So I get it so that everything is, is centered and then take the plier out. So now that's my lady's little head. I'm going to hold on to her head and wrap her scarf around her neck. And again, you could do this in a, as a very messy wrap where they're not controlled, but I am filling in that space to go down to the wraps that I already did. And I think I'm, I like the tapered look where the top part of this is, is, a, is skinnier and then the part that we doubled up on is fatter. As hard as I try to be neat, I still have glue on me. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to stop there and cut away. Now, if you wanted to play around, which I do sometimes making spirals out of the extra wire, you can, but this is such a small fragment. I think I'm only going to do the one spiral. So let's turn this around, cut that extra and put it back in the scrap bag. And then want to make sure there are no sharp edges so that just needs to lay down. Yeah, lovely. Now I don't know yet what I'm going to do with this piece. If it were a charm, having the loop oriented facing forward may work perfectly, but if I decide that I want to put it as a necklace uh, focal point or, or um, I lost my word. Anyway, very easy to take your plier like this and rotate that loop just just halfway around. I'm not going to do it now because as I said, I make these up in advance and I don't exactly know what my projects are going to be yet. So I leave many of them with my options open. So now this may be a little bit long for a spiral. Um, in fact, I think it is just because the fra this fragment is so is so small. I don't want a giant spiral, so I'm going to take off about that much. And I think on this one, I think I'm going to do a pretty tight spiral. Sometimes I do them where the spiral is open, so I am making the tiniest loop possible and just get it going a little bit with my round nose pliers. And once I have it going a bit, then I can come in, flatten it. I like my bent chain nose pliers for this and just in small little movements, make that spiral. And one other thing you can do with this is if you make a spiral that is small like that, now I've opted to make a larger, a larger one on this, but if I were to cut my wire shorter and make a spiral like this, here is a space for a jump ring and you could dangle something else in front of this fragment. I'm not going to do that on this one, but it is an option. If you had a little pearl charm that you wanted to hang or a small sea animal charm that would be really pretty but on this one I just wanted to do a nice neat tight spiral just push it in place with my finger and there you have a really high-end polished 
and simple, elegant pendant or charm made out of something that you free you found on the beach. And again, on the back, I'm going to do it on this piece just to show you. Um, it does. It, this piece is nice and tight and it is not going anywhere. But if you were ever to do one of these and you were happy with it, but it still felt a little bit loose, you can turn it over on the back and simply take your plier. Let me get a hold of it. Simply take your plier and put a little bend in those wires. And that makes it a little bit tighter. It takes up a little bit of the wire space. It wasn't necessary on this one, but that way you know how to do it because this is a little bit of a free form project. And you may have to go back, like I just noticed that when I did that, I offset my loop a little bit. So you can always go back and straighten it and tidy it up. So there we have it. There is all of our pretty pendants. So now I would like to take a couple of these things that we have made and do a project. So I showed you in the beginning of the video the glass bottles and I found these at Dollar Tree. I think there were four in a pack for $1.25 but these are available at all the craft stores and I'm certain you can buy them online. I liked these because of the size and I like that they have a very thick gauge loop already embedded in the cork. So it's good to go to create a charm or pendant with. So we're going to take this and the little funnel that I showed you and put that in and let me bring my sand a little bit closer, my little dish of sand. And as I showed you, you can use colored sand. You can put just sand in it. It is so tiny, <laughs> this little funnel. So th this is where you can be as creative as you want. You could fill the entire bottle with sand and that be all you do. I'm going to do, I think, a little bit more sand and then I want to pull in my little selection bowl of, yeah, I'm happy with that. Pull in my little selection bowl of tiny seashells and just choose one or two that, that fit in the bottle. Does that one go? Shake him down. Oh yeah, let's try the cork on him. Yeah, he fits in there really well. And let me see if I can add something else. See what else will fit. This is so much fun. Honestly, this is so much fun. And I remember my beach walk, so here's a tiny one that might go to shake it a little bit. Put the lid on. Oh yeah, beautiful. So see, it's in there. Now you absolutely, when you're finished filling your bottle and you're happy with the way that it looks, we absolutely will have to glue the, the lid on because you do not want this to come off and have your bottle of sand and seashells on the floor and your necklace or a piece <laughs> still on you. So um, I you, you can use the E6000 glue for this for sure but I want to make a piece with you right away so I'm going to bring in my other glue that I love to use which is the Loctite Ultra Control It's Gel and it has a really fine tip and it has these um, sort of buttons on the side so you can control the tiniest amount that's coming out and all I do is just get my gel to come out and just put a little bit, a few dots around the inside of my bottle, just four dots, and then place my, my cork inside. Give it a nice bit of pressure. And so now you can, it, this, this doesn't dry instantly because it's gel, but by the time we're ready to do anything with it, it will be dry. And then you can play with the bottle, shake the sand, look at the seashells inside, and you know, it's not going to come apart. So we will set that one here to dry. Let me lay it down. And then we'll do another one. And I think on this one, as I said, uh, you, could do, you could do colored sand. I have pink and blue. Um, on this one, I think I'm not going to do sand. On this one, I think I'm going to just go through my tiny seashells and just fill the bottle 
with these tiny seashells. I think I just want to see seashells. This is so much fun. And you know, as I was playing with this, I thought of there are so many other options of what you could fill the bottle with. You could, I often, when I'm on the beach, find the mother of pearl shell that are fragments. And I thought even just a whole bottle of little tiny pieces of mother of pearl shell, just the shimmer and how pretty that would be color wise. Oh, I'm loving this. Oh my gosh, I don't know if this will fit, but I have this. He's broken a little bit, but let's see if he will go in. This little tiny starfish. Oh, he does. He fit in. So cute. Yeah, and you know, uh, if you're a fidgeter, this is jewelry that you can really play with. Although today, let's see, am I happy with that? Yes, I can see them. They move around nicely. It's not too filled. Okay, clear the sand off and let's do the same thing. Let's add our cork. Just put a few dots of this gel super glue, Loctite. We want to make sure that the things we make don't come apart. And there we have it. Like I said, you if you only have the E6000 glue, that works well for this too, but it does take longer to set. So when I want to make things right away, I'll switch to this one. It dries faster. So we have two of our little bottles prepared. Oh, I was looking for the, the cap to my glue. Um, so now I also wanted to share this with you. My last shopping trip with Wendy, we found this amazing place in Kissimmee, Florida for a bead wholesale place. And we each got a pair of these mother of pearl and silver flip-flop earrings. I knew that I would not keep mine as earrings. And I was, I showed them to Wendy because she loved doing the resin art. And I thought how cute this would be on embedded in one of her resin art pieces, like, you know, someone's little flip-flops on the on the ocean and so she got a pair as well. I knew I wasn't going to keep them for earrings and I didn't exactly know what I was going to do with them but when I was working on these projects today I found their I found their home. So I am going to remove the earring wire from this this side. I'm going to just take that off if it will cooperate. Oh, I had the wrong side. There, I just take that off. And now I just have a little mother of pearl flip-flop. And this is where we're going to use these small segments of that stainless steel chain. And I'm going to make a book marker. This is, bookmarkers are one of my very favorite things to make. I make them in quite a few ways. And, you know, I find for my friends that don't wear jewelry, or even for if you have to do uh, gifts for boys or, you know, uncles or, or fathers or grandfathers, even in a digital world, everyone seems to have a Bible, a journal, a planner, a novel. I, I feel that people can use these and it's a very sweet handmade gift that you can modify for masculine, feminine, and different themes. So we're going to use our ocean theme and do some. So you can buy these at any craft store and online. These have the hole already in it and you can create your dangles and this goes inside your book and it's one and done. But I like to make my own. So I have these but I prefer to make my own. So I am actually going to do a video in the future on several ways to make bookmarkers because I do them with all different materials. So I'm not going to show you how to do this today. I already had these made because we spent so much time creating our charms and dangles and focal points. Um, but I already made this one and it's quite long. And so I think I that gives me an opportunity to do a little bit longer chain. I'll decide on that. And then I did a shorter one. 
and you know I, you hammer this on the bench block to work harden it and it's a very free form very organic and so much fun to make and no two come out alike so we're going to create these two little projects i will start with the silver one and i think um let's see do i want on this one i want to hang my seashell bottle at the bottom and then i want to add a couple of things here so one of my flip-flops will hang up here and maybe a seashell so it will have three things do i want a fourth one mm. let's connect those and see how it looks i'm going to bring in some since that is stainless steel chain, let me pull out a selection of stainless steel jump rings. And let's attach. So let's start with the chain. I think I'll use a large jump ring at the bottom and a little bit smaller one at the top. That one looks good. I need my second pair of pliers. And you guys, I know many of you have done millions of these, but you never pull your jump rings apart. You always twist them open. So you can keep that nice round shape. And so that spiral that I made at the top of the book marker becomes the anchor. Oh, before I close it, I have to add my chain. and just close it really well. Make sure there's no space where the two ends of the jump ring meet. And I tend to put my pliers underneath and give it a squish and uh, make sure it's not rough. So we have our chain hanging. Now at the bottom, I'll go ahead and do this larger piece. Let's see if it's already, I think it's already dry. This is a little bit thicker gauge and a little bit larger just because as a dangle or pendant this is sort of large. Close that up really well. Yeah, it's got a, I don't feel the closure at all. So that's great. Oh, that's so cute. It's so cute already. You could be done as is, but since we have made these lovely charms, we're going to add a couple I'm going to use the jump ring that was already on this little flip-flop earring, which is no longer an earring. I love to do that. I love to repurpose things in my jewelry making. Occasionally, I will do <clears throat> a thrift store or buy a, a Goodwill, <clears throat> excuse me, guys, buy a Goodwill haul and, you know, sort through it and repurpose things. Let's see, where do I want this? Maybe, maybe right there. On these, you don't have to be really mindful of the attachment the way you would for a necklace or a bracelet because it's going to move around once it's in the book. Oh, but I don't like the way that's hanging. The back of the flip-flop is showing. Let's see, what can I do with that? Maybe this flip-flop is not going to work in the middle of a chain. I kind of wanted it on here, but it may not work. Let's see. If I do it that way where the flip-flop goes in. Hmm, I don't like the way it's hanging. It seems to be, no matter which way I want to attach it, it seems to be that the back of the flip-flop is showing. What can I do? Um, Maybe add, an, let's add another jump ring, a smaller one, and let's see if that makes it hang a little bit better. Let's try. I do kind of want it on there. That one was already closed very well. I almost can't see where it, where it came together. And I'm trying to do this around the camera lens so let's see if that makes it better. So the flip-flop hangs in front, right there. 
and see if that's better with a second jump ring. Didn't want to interfere with being able to see that it actually is a flip-flop. Oh yeah, that's much better. Gives it a little bit more freedom to move and you're not always looking at the back side. And then this shell that we turned into a charm with a simple bead cap and a jump ring. I also do tend to, yeah, you could even do it right at the top, do one right at the top. Let's see how it looks if I go down one. I don't want it to hang on top of my flip-flop. Well, I think that looks nice. Close it up very well. Well, I didn't get a good closure. There. Oh, so cute. Let me bring in my book and show you. So cute, so cute. Yeah, I love these bookmarks. That is so much fun. And you know, this is also something that Wendy liked to make. She has quite a few videos on bookmarks. So that one is done. And let's do another one. I had already made this smaller one. So let's bring in that little piece of chain that was left over from the bargain bead box. I think I might need to cut this one. Let's lay it out so we can see where we're going. Yeah, that's a bit too long. I wanted to use this. Um, I finished these while the camera battery was recharging. So I had attached one of the double bead caps to the end of this shell, lacquered it, and then I settled on a green rondelle crystal. So I think I like the look of the colors with that. And then this was a fragment of one of those swirl seashells. It's very smooth. There's no sharp edges. So I attached my bead cap and wire right to the front. And I think I want to use that. And then I lacquered this shell because it was very dry and dull looking when it came out of the water, but I love the color. So I lacquered it and I'm just going to use this one as is with a jump ring. So I like that. I think that's really pretty. Let's get the length of our chain. Not an exact science. I'm just going to take some of these links off. Um, before I cut, let me make sure that I won't have charms hanging. Yeah, I think I'll just take a few off. It's not so long. I, I will even save even the smaller piece of this chain. I save everything because sometimes you, in a design, you need that little scrap of chain. Well, let's bring in some more of these copper jump rings. We can put these stainless steel ones back. Let's see. This is a mixed metal because I have the antique bronze and the and the bookmark is out of a copper. So I think, um, well, maybe I'll stick with the antique bronze. I had already started with that, so I need two of them. get our chain attached to the center of that swirl. This part is really fun, just simple connections. And you start to say, oh, well, you have to hang on to it. <laughs> Let me try that again. Right after I say simple connections, I drop the whole thing. <laughs> but this is where you start to see a finished design from all the work that you've put in and all the decisions you made along the way. Ever notice how many decisions there are in making jewelry as you start a piece? You know, color, amounts, spaces. Very pretty. And I tend to like to put my, my biggest piece, my heavier, sort of my focal piece when I'm doing these, on the bottom. 
Now you can also, I'm just doing a few charms, but you can fill this chain. You can create a whole bunch of little charms and dangles and literally fill the chain if you like it busy. Or you could do a simple one piece hanging. Actually, that's really lovely just as it is. But I'm going to go ahead and connect these other two. Where did my jump rings go? I just took out two jump rings and I have no idea where they went. Did I throw them back in here by mistake? There's one on that one. Maybe I miscounted. Okay. There's another one. So I'm going to add this one at the top, I think. Yeah, maybe even at the very top. You have options. Put this one hanging at the top loop. Yes, I like that. And then put this little guy in the middle. He, he was lacquered yesterday when the camera battery died. I do want the back of the shell to be facing. I said there was not, it wasn't necessary to worry about directions on these, but it actually is in some cases. Let's see, I'm going to go right in the middle, I think. Is this jump ring too fat to fit through? I don't think it is. Oh, I am sorry, you guys, I dropped him. Let me try this. Let me put the jump ring through the chain first. This shouldn't be that hard. I'm trying to look in the camera and make sure that I'm in camera. Actually, I think that is the problem. This does not, this jump ring is a too thick of a gauge to go through the chain. Yeah, I've tried every way and it does not want to go. So, you know what? I wanted to show you another one more thing before we before we end the video so actually I even like this one with just the shell at the bottom but that's also another really sweet bookmarker so this little one is going to be left off and I wanted to show you one more thing that can be done once you have created your shell charms and focal points and pendants I don't know why, but somehow I really like the look of seashell jewelry with leather. And I had this really pretty, uh, I think it's two millimeter metallic silver leather. And I did it as an over the head necklace with no clasp. So all the connection points is on a large jump ring in the middle. Let me clear a space and I'll lay it down so you can have a better look. And so I did in this one, I did the bottle filled with white sand and there is, if you can see, one freshwater pearl inside and a tiny little conch shell. And then I did a stack of mother of pearl chips and some of those components that I made and lacquered, the little seashell with crystals and tiny, I think these are three millimeter shell beads. And over here, another crystal with a cowrie shell and just simply wire wrapped it because there was a space for the wire wrapping. So I like the noise that it makes. I did three dangles of different lengths on this one and they move around and you just, this is fun jewelry for walking on the beach or even eating at a restaurant that's beachside, just to pull it over your head, even with a white t-shirt, so elegant and pretty. So once you have a good selection of components, which is what I do, as I've said, make quite a few of them, store them, and when I am ready to design necklaces or bookmarkers or bracelets, I have things to work with. 
So this was my huge project. I hope this video wasn't too long. I just didn't, I worked on how to show you the different elements and the different possibilities when creating with natural materials. So I hope it was fun for you. And I hope your takeaway was some really great ideas that you can make your own and that you'll look at some of the things you've picked up on the beach yourself and see them in a different way. So I really appreciate your time. Thank you for being with us. And I will see you guys in the next video. Ciao.